Las Vegas discount dot net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. Las Vegas discount dot net. Las Vegas discount dot net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit Las Vegas discount dot net. This is Brock Lesnar, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yo, hi, this is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to listen to Fight Net Radio. Lee Harvey Oswald, what's your name? I don't know how am I supposed to know you. This is Frank Shamrock. You're listening to Fight Net Radio. Hi, this is Mia, the Knockout St. John. You're listening to Fight Net Radio, and there's no way I would ever touch Lee. This is Chuck Jack Vivadell. Hi, I'm Stephen Bonner, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yeah, Henderson, you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Everybody, welcome to Fight Net Radio, <laughs> where Lee's burning every <laughs> bridge there is out there. All right. Hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on FightNetRadio.com. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one-hour television spectacular. Hi, hi, everyone. Welcome to FightNet Radio. Lee Hanish, Andrew Lavashe, bringing you the wonderful world of boxing. Eleven years, eleven years, eleven years. Started off in a garage with a handheld recorder. Uh, I remember being at my house in San Diego, uh, divorced, Andrew, going through a divorce, one of many, um, and my ex-wife walking out. I was living in the garage. I had a detached garage that I'd converted office, and she said the now infamous words, I think Sugar Ray Leonard's on the phone for you. <laughs> You're so sick. <laughs> Is it really him? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Is. Probably is. That's true story, people. And then she took off or what? No, no, no. Oh, she okay. Kept, I, thought that was, the, I thought the, that was the distraction. No, 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 no. No, that's funny, though. Funny. Funny. You're all hello? Er, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. She kept... Well, was he on the phone? What the hell? Yeah, that's back in the contender days, dude. Got you. Okay. Had to do the interview with me because I was a big time celebrity. (laughs) I was just recording people with like... And I remember recording in those days. People don't remember 11 years ago what the internet was like. It was the Wild West. Nothing worked. I think I recorded with a handheld digital recorder plugged into the phone. Might have even been a cassette tape still. I asked my daughter the other day. We had a lot of fights today. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm getting to it. I'll get to it. Jeez, you in a hurry to get to all of these? None of them were stellar fights, Andrew. Would you call any of them like really that like mind-blowing to talk about? No. Right. No. So right, we'll start con- off. So we'll start off continue. in the afternoon. No, ESPN Friday Night Fights. Oh, now you're gonna just go right in. I'm going it. right into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lee Hanish, Andrew Labache. I was just reminiscing about Fight Net Radio. I appreciate all of you listening, except the Deontay Wilder fans, who. How do Ooh, I say it, this? I'm gonna Lee. try to do a whole show without cursing. Okay. All so, right. Same here. Same here. Okay. So. All of you Deontay Wilder fans who listen to this show, strictly based on the titles I put on, listening to about, I guess you listen to all of it because we usually hide the Deontay stuff. Um, you guys can all take a blunt instrument like a broom handle and stuff it up your rectum. Wow. What? What? What, what happened there? Why? Well, I didn't What's cuss, did I? No, but what's going on? Why the okay. hate on the fans? Uh, well, I've what been sharing do? with you the illiterate Deontay Wilder fans who seem to think that our YouTube page is the only place where we publish Fight Net Radio. One person actually went, that's why you've only got 12 listeners Ooh. or 12 followers. 
I'm like, That's a little I didn't even know that we were posting our show to YouTube <laughs> until you had actually started to write comments. <laughs> and I was actually pretty happy that 12 people were subscribing to the show. On Lee, I thought Lee, I thought you were going to drop the breaking news. Did you see what what came out this week? Yeah, the the fight odds. We'll get to it. I mean, yes. I you know uh, what for the one Deontay Wilder fan or Deontay Wilder, I'm assuming it's just Deontay Wilder who listens to the show <laughs> because he is one illiterate son of a gun. I mean, whoever <laughs> the, the hate we get when we post anything. I guarantee the name of this show is going to be something about Deontay Wilder just because it pisses people off or at least the three people on Facebook. I mean, on YouTube, that's why you only have 12 follow 12 fo- people following your show on YouTube. You're listening to a podcast on YouTube, stupid, whoever you are. I'm hoping you're listening to this right now. Not the rest of you guys, not Andrew's family and the 40 other people who listen to the show. not you guys there's just one person who's listening to this show right now broken up into pieces on youtube which is mind-boggling because they only break it down like you know a show every half hour hour whatever it is so to that person i say you be dumb and the reason i say you be dumb that's exactly what they wrote about us we be dumb you be dumb you don't know nothing about deontay I'm quoting directly. You be dumb. You don't know nothing about Deontay. (laughs) That's why he said it was Deontay himself. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it sounds like Deontay. God, wouldn't that be great? Deontay is like just a total freak and he's trolling the internet on anybody who writes about him. We'll get to it, people. Trust me. There's a whole lot to talk about Deontay today. But we do have t- boxing to talk about. Andrew has put together a wonderful show at 6.21 in the morning. Andrew, what the blue hell were you doing up at that hour? <laughs> That's uh, I got about three hours of sleep in time at, at that moment. I know, but you were drinking last night. It was clear nah. by your text. There was a beer in your hand while you were texting away and watching boxing. <laughs> no, 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 no. No drinking last night. All Just right. me and the family. All right. Uh, Which fight are we talking about? We're going to start right off with Friday night, ESPN. Uh, Beltran beats Mosley to win the WBO lightweight title. This from Fight News in his fourth world title try, 36-year-old Ray Beltran. 35-7-1 with 21 KOs, scored a 12-round Umaminous decision over... Side note, Umaminous. I thought this year I'd work harder on inside jokes. For those of you that are longtime listeners, you get the joke. Those of you who just started listening, Umaminous... Andrew said it for so many years and then worked so hard to say unanimous that I want to keep you mammonous alive. Inside joke, continuing with the story. Uh, Scored a 12 round you mammonous decision over former world champion Paulusus, Paulus Moses, who is 40 and four with 25 KOs to claim the vacant WBO lightweight title Friday night at the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno, Nevada. In a tough, gritty, uh, in a tough, gritty fight, the 39-year-old African sharpshooter. I didn't write the story, people. Save your white guilt stories. I did see, by the way, side note. <laughs> did you go and see uh, T'Challa yet? Did you go and see Black Panther? No. Oh, freaking great. They actually uh, put Oakland in the opening scene. In a tough, gritty fight, the 39-year-old African sharpshooter. Moses busted up the face of Beltran with jabs and right hands, but Beltran battled through the blood, rallied to win the late rounds, and pulled away to a 117-111, 117-111, and 116-112 umaminous decision on the scorecards. Next up for Beltran could be a defense of the WBO Junior Welterweight title against Vasily Lomachenko in Madison Square Garden. If I was a betting individual, that's a side note, and I was going to bet money, I would bet all my monies on Vasily Lomachenko. I don't think that there's a way that um, they're going to let Vasily lose a fight ever again if Top Rank can help it. But I and not, o- not only that, Lee, he's got to have a real bad night to lose to someone like Ray Beltran. Um, I didn't even know look- Ray, te- Ray was still fighting until I saw this story. Like, I know that we talked about it last week. I put it in the back of my mind. But 36 in boxing is 
old these days, especially for journeymen, guys who take beatings. And Ray's always been a guy who takes a beating. Especially against the the top class of the divisions. Um, he's never really had a a good uh, marquee name on, on his uh, win list. So, you know, you, him against Lomachenko, I, I'm hoping he goes 12 rounds, you know, but I see him losing on points easily in that fight. The Friday night did nothing to change that. That was a workman-like uh, decision Ugh, victory. I hate oh, that word. Right. Over a guy that's nowhere Inside, prepared. hold on. Inside joke. For those of you who don't understand the word uh, workman-like, that means the fight was just complete dog crap on a stick. It was very dull. dull. Same thing over and over. You know, you knew Beltran was winning these rounds. Lee, the, the number one reason why you knew he was winning was just the two opponents, Beltran and, and Moses. Um, the, one guy is been built up as the opponent for Lamanchenko, right? They, that's all they've been talking about for Beltran for like the last, what, half a year, possibly even a year. Um, they've been building this fight up. So I, I had no – there was no doubt in my mind that, that Beltran was winning the close rounds. Um, he was winning the fight. Uh, he's in there. He's giving it his all lead, but he's giving it his all to a guy that's in the B-level class. He's not right. A. That's not A right. level. So, it, top rank needed to do a way better job of, of putting someone in there that Beltran actually could have destroyed yeah, last but night. To, again, if you're building fighters that aren't dangerous, that hold titles, again, I think they did a good job. You got Beltran. He's got a title. He's going to fight Vasily Lomachenko. It'll look good there's on no, paper. There's, there's, there's no a market. slam dunk fight. It's a slam dunk win, but there's no market for this fight. There's no one going to be interested in this. Beltran is old. He looks old. His record has seven losses. He doesn't have, like I just said, he, what's his, I don't even know what his, his biggest win uh, would be. I, that, off the top of my head, I can't think of Beltran's biggest win. I could think of a, he had to draw Ricky Burns. You can say that maybe, right? Maybe he was robbed there, but there, there's nothing on his, he went 12 rounds. Are we going to start giving credit for guys that lose uh, wide decisions, but go 12 rounds with the likes of Terrence Crawford? Um, he's not going to beat Lomachenko. This is a dull, this, this fight going in is a dud, in my opinion. Um, the only thing that made Lomachenko Salido exciting was Salido pulled the upset in the first fight. Going in to Lomachenko versus Salido one, nobody expected that upset to happen. No one cared about that fight. Um, it's it's almost as if Top Rank is trying to switch Beltran into the role of another Orlando Salido, which makes this fight more compelling. I don't think so, Lee. I, I see Lomachenko clearly outboxing the slow, um, slower uh, Ray Beltran that night on his way to a w another WBO title. There you go. That's more time than this fight actually deserved. There, you, Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No, it, it was a buildup. It was a buildup, and in my eyes, Lee, it, it, it faded out. It, it was a dud because he didn't – he did not – one, he didn't dominate. You you just read it. He had to come back in the second half. What? What yeah. do you mean he had to come back in the second half? And, and two, it just – when you're when they keep bringing up the name Vasily Lomachenko and you're watching what's being – producing in the ring, these guys don't compare it. The, the average fan – that watch Lomachenko's last fight knows these guys can't handle that guy. Um, all right, I'm going to tell you guys, before I start the next story, there's going to be a preface to the next story. I'm going to read the story, and then I'm going to get up and go get a coffee while Andrew goes on a rant for five minutes about this fight. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. It's not that I want Andrew to go on a rant for five minutes. It's because my usual coffee getter person that I have on Sunday morning has a hangover. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> she, they didn't, she didn't show up today. <laughs> Dude, all I heard was menudo. That's all I heard. I went in there once and the, it was dark and uh, I kept, I kept, do you want a breakfast burrito? No, I don't want a breakfast burrito. I said, do you want menudo? Well, yeah, or a breakfast burrito or, or something. A little, little hungover. A little hungover, folks. Important safety tip. Don't mix white, red, and champagne all in one evening. Yeah, yeah. No. <sighs> Cubans and their alcohol. Uh, I digress. 
Garcia, TKO's Rios in the ninth. Yes, Andrew will have five.